Well, here we are at the project table. I want to kind of give you an idea of what's going on here. I've taken some distilled water and heated it on the stove. And I heated it up so I could get about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm trying to get up around 150 degrees or so. And we've got 150 degrees and it's still climbing. So that's about the operating temperature of the cell. And over here we have the pulse width modulator control box with the dual edge map sensor enhancer. So we're going to turn this on. We have power to the pulse width modulator. The fan is turning, blowing heat away from the modulator. This dial is going to turn up the juice to the cell. And you can see we have well, no problem at all getting up to 25 amps. The reason why I heated the water is because the hotter the water becomes and it's uh, mixed with electrolyte, the more conductive it is. To uh, start with efficient electrolyte for your test, it's important to know, you know, what's the outcome going to be. So, we'll pull this off here, and I hope you can see this. I'm going to turn this up again, and you can see the production coming off the cell. We are at 25 amps, and it's just going like crazy. Now we turn this back down. Here we are, about 10 amps. Still going pretty good. So that's the effect of the pulse width modulator. There's about a teaspoon, or is exactly one teaspoon of uh, uh, lye, or sodium hydroxide, in this tank. And that's about a half gallon of water. So that's a pretty good ratio. You'd say about two teaspoons per gallon of water to run a pulse width modulator in this particular design. There's the part everybody seems to want to see, and it is kind of fun. See my gas bubbling up in this jar here, coming out of my generator at 25 amps. And you see those bubbling pretty good. That's how you make water explode. We use electricity from your car's engine to split the water molecule into its hydrogen and oxygen atoms and feed it into your intake enhancing your engine's combustion. Now, water by itself isn't very conductive, so we need a little help. Uh, if you use an electrolyte solution, you'll significantly enhance the conductivity of water. So it's much more easily electrolyzed. And a lot of people use baking soda. I don't recommend it because there are things in baking soda that will in end up sticking to your plates, or your rods, or your wires, and eventually your uh, generator will cease to work. So I suggest sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide if you can get your hands on it. This is sodium hydroxide. I test lye. I got this from the Zenith Supply Store in Seattle, Washington. And it's about five and a half bucks for this can. This has lasted me quite a while. I use about two teaspoons per gallon of distilled water. and this keeps the plates from rusting out, which will happen if you use salt or baking soda. You can rust the stainless steel plates. This preserves the plates, it enhances the uh, conductivity of the water, and it doesn't leave your water all murky like baking soda does. And what I have, I'm going to show you this, I have this test water that I've been using for several months now. And you can see there's a little bit of discoloration here in the water. That's not too bad. I've tested a lot of cells with that jug of water. So you'll notice I'm using rubber gloves. And the reason is because lye is extremely caustic. You get this on your hands and it'll cause burns that you don't want. You'll really regret getting this on your hands and leaving it there. So what I do 
is I keep a bottle of white vinegar near my lye. So if I spill some lye or I get some on me, I neutralize it by pouring a little bit of that vinegar on there. Here's a little something about the pulse width modulator. In order to conserve your equipment, we run a pulse width modulator at about 25 amps. Anything more than that is going to cause damage to your car's alternator. So 25 amps is pretty much the standard. Unless you have a higher amp uh, alternator, I don't recommend going any higher than that. When you start the car, you want this to be in the off position. You want the dial to be set at zero. And the reason for that is that if you start your car, you're running juice to the, the uh, relay at the same time you're getting battery voltage to the relay. And about one time out of ten, it fries that relay if you have both voltages going at the same time. So you leave it in the off position. When you start your car, you turn the switch on, and then you turn your dial up to get your desired amperage. So it's pretty simple, but it's a thing that you want to do to safeguard your equipment. You'll dial down the the, uh, the pulse width modulator when you're ready to shut your car off, and you'll kill the switch, and that'll conserve your equipment. I mean, this will run you for a long, long time. Now just a little about the dual edge map sensor enhancer. This is your on and off switch. When you turn it on, that's when the dials are enabled. And this switch decides which knob is enabled. And what you would do is set one side for city driving and one side for highway driving. And honestly, it really doesn't matter which, you, which one you set for which, but I have them labeled here so you can easily remember we're in the city. So we'll set it for this dial. We go to highway, so we set it for this dial. And the instructions are included on how to use a map sensor enhancer. As you turn this dial up, it leans out your fuel-air mixture. So you'll have a different RPM a uh, different engine RPM for city driving than you will for highway driving. So these aren't going to be set at the same, but once you set them, you don't want to have to mess with them when you're driving down the road. You want to just be able to turn the unit on, decide where you're driving, city or highway, operate the switch to go to that dial, and go down the road. You want this to be as simple as possible.